Today, we continue our journey and set off to discover the four most beautiful villages in Alsace. On the itinerary are Rigvier, Kaisersberg, Rimovile and Egisheim. And on our way, we spontaneously stop at Benvir, which is a wine village that was completely destroyed between December 1944 and January 1945. Only the war memorial from World War I and two houses miraculously survived the destruction. Near the church, we can admire a beautiful modern stained glass window dating back to around 1960. And we proceed with our journey towards Rigvier. And since we can't do things like everyone else, we arrive through the west exit where the magnificent sculpture by artist Josepha stands. The Lady of the Park, who has taken up residence since June 2017. There, we discover the ramparts, built around 1,500, to protect the inhabitants and the produce from their vineyards. At the same time, the outpost was reinforced and equipped with a drawbridge, the remnants of which can still be observed. We also admire the wooden portcullis, dating back to 1536, which is arguably the oldest in Europe, as well as the massive double lift door. Just behind this door, we catch a glimpse of the Doldo Tower, standing 25 meters tall, which was built at the same time as the first fortified enclosure in the late 13th century. It serves as both a defensive tower, a watchtower, and a belfry. The belfry is a building that housed the communal bells served as a watchtower, preserved charters and treasures, hosted aldermanic meetings, and also served as a prison. Throughout the centuries, having a belfry was a symbol of power and prosperity for the municipalities. On our left is the fifth tower, which is a corner defensive tower that served as both a prison and a torture chamber from the 15th to the 18th century. Upon entering, one feels captivated by the beauty of the streets and the colorful half-timbered houses along General de Gaulle Street, which runs through the village. At the foot of the Dolder Tower, we discover the Sin Fountain, installed in the mid-16th century, which was particularly used for gouging and cleaning barrels, casks, vates, tubs, hampers, and other containers used by winemakers. On our stroll along the street, we are admiring the houses, each more beautiful than the next. We come across bars, restaurants, small shops and old signs that add the authenticity of the village. It's truly a journey back in time. One can stroll for a long time as there are so many details to discover here and there. No, no. Discoveries abound, such as on Berkheim Street, where a house with a tower and a sundial. Yellow, green, blue, red. The houses come in all colors, and some are even classified as historical monuments, like the house of number 13 on General de Gaulle Street. In the same street, we also catch sight of the tallest half-timbered house in Alsace. Regularly besieged, often in search of identity, yet always standing strong, the town of Rigvier was definitely attached to France in 1796 by the Treaty of Paris and is now classified among the most beautiful villages of France. Over the centuries, it has established itself as a rare site that deserves to be visited. This medieval town, surrounded by vineyards, welcomes 2 million visitors each year.
now arrive at Egisheim, another must-visit village and one of the most beautiful villages in France. Right from the entrance, we are greeted by vibrant half-timbered houses. There are numerous winemakers' houses where they sell their wines and, of course, you can indulge in some tasting to select the wines you desire to purchase. I'm a ghost in these walls Or at least We now reach the castle square and discover the St. Leon Fontaine. It pays tribute to Pope Leon IX, who was originally from the village. How I feel for her. The fontaine was built on the site of the former keep in a neo-Romanesque style and was consecrated in 1894, dedicated to Saint Leon. His castle and chapel overlook the fontaine. But I know I have to try Try to let her go Because she won't be mine I listen when she talks I watch her when she walks Inside, on the vault, Martin Schangauer painted medallions in the style of the 11th century, depicting seven scenes from the life of Saint Leon. The chapel's six stained glass windows each represent two saints or holy figures of Alsace, many of whom come from the family of the Counts of Egisheim. Never As for the castle, it was built on the remains of a medieval fortress from the 13th century. Only the enclosing wall remains, as the rest of the castle was remodeled towards the end of the 19th century. The Egisham Castle now belongs to the municipality and is open only during exhibitions, certain events and receptions. In any case, the square is absolutely splendid. We continue our visit and come across a statue of Joan of Arc enthroned on the war memorial. The first church in Egisheim probably dates back to the 11th century. In the 12th century, a Romanesque basilica with three naves and a tower was built. By the 18th century, it had become too small for the rapidly growing population and was in a state of disrepair. In fact, in July 1787, a part of the church collapsed during a religious service. The nave of the original church was demolished in 1807 and replaced by the current spacious nave built in the barn style in 1808 and 1809. One can admire the splendid porch of the former church. In 1954, new stained glass windows were installed in the church on the occasion of the 900th anniversary of the death of Saint Leon IX. If I could stop the time, don't you know that I would, cause I... Being in Alsace, storks are among us. And it's in this region of France that they are most commonly found. Just a look up, and we can spot some of them returning to their nests. Forever, forever. I watch you. Little stop for a little pretzel, and now it's time to head towards our next destination, Ribovillet. We arrive at the top of the village, where we enjoy the view of the vineyards and the cityscape in the background. Make me your blouse, your 
As we enter the main artery of the town, we once again encounter colorful facades. We also admire a drawing of the village from 1644. We come across the house St. John d'Arc, a grand property located along the southern enclosure wall. It includes a dwelling dating back to 1581, although the ground floor and upper floor were reconstructed in the second half of the 18th century. This residence belonged to the bourgeoisie of Ribeauville in 1579 and in 1920 it became the property of the congregation of the Sisters of the Divine Savior who established a convalescent home there under the name Maison Saint-Jean d'Arc. In 2005, the property was sold to the city of Ribeauville. After extensive renovation work, the Maison pour tous Jean d'Arc was inaugurated and today part of the premises is dedicated to early childhood and community associations. As we wander through the town, we notice numerous storks' nests on the rooftops. In the 13th century, Ribovide was granted the status of a town and surrounded itself with train parts. It's divided into four quarters, each with its own fortifications, get towards a low passage from one to another. Of the four towers, only the butcher's tower remains in place. Its location, in a district where butcher activities were prevalent, gave it its current name. Originally, built with these three floors, it was raised in 1536. Throughout its history, it has been used for various purposes. As a passage point in the Middle Ages, it became the belfry of the town and served as a prison. It still retains many attributes of its medieval origins. We arrive at Place de la Cine, where the Friedrich Fountain stands, with its red sandstone statue of a woman sculpted in 1862. It represents the city, its agriculture, and its industry. On this square, you can find the Auberge du Soleil, formerly a meeting for minstrels, the Auberge du Mouton, former post relay and the Cour du Grand Bailly form an administrative center of the entire Ribopierre Lordship. Small canals run through the town, which adds to its charm. Located on Rue du Temple, it's the Church of St. Gregory, which dates back to the 13th century and has been classified as a historical monument since 1994. The main nave was completed in 1473, as indicated by the keystone above the organ. Also depicted in the keystone are the coats of arms of the Ribopierre family, Colmar, and the bishoprics of Strasbourg and Basel. Several elements are worth mentioning, the Silberman organ dating back to 1701, the Mount of Olives, 15th century, from the Dussenbach convent, a Virgin and Child sculpture known as the Madame de la Petite Verrie, and the Chapel Maria Rate with the liturgical furnishings created by the Strasbourg artist Christoph Baron in 2017. After this visit, we head towards the last village, Kaisersberg, which means Mountain of the Emperor. And this village has plenty of beautiful surprises in store for us, such as a 13th century medieval castle with its imposing cylindrical keep overlooking the town. We stroll through the village in the late afternoon and the vibrant colors illuminate the facades of the buildings. 
We can see houses like the Briefaller House, which has been a historical monument since 1913, or the Herzer Blacksmith House, dating back to the 16th century. The town of Kaisersberg is traversed in its center by the Weiss River, which stretches for 24 kilometers. To connect the old town to the upper town, divided by this river, an initial wooden structure was built. In 1514, a fortified stone bridge was constructed to prevent any enemy incursion from the river. The bridge was equipped with battlements, arrow slits and gun ports. In the middle of the bridge, there is also a small chapel that houses a polychrome statue of the Virgin and Child. Before the statue was placed there, it was used to imprison inhabitants responsible for minor offenses, making them the laughing stock of the town. This bridge is a must-see in the village and a perfect spot for photography enthusiasts. We are charmed by the beauty and richness of its historic city center. Its strategic position revives the memory of the Roman road that connected Alsace to Lorraine. We are pleasantly surprised by the stunning colorful and flower adorned half-timbered houses, magnificent corner orioles, geraniums in the window during the summer, cobbled street, the Weiss River flowing through the town, and overlooking the village, the medieval castle which we are heading to now. Climb the tower and enjoy the sunset and the splendid view of the city. We now descend into the village for one last stroll, catching a glimpse of the Saint Croix church, the old town mill and the lower house, one of the most emblematic dwellings in the town, dating back to the 18th century. It is nicknamed the House of the Virgin because of the mural painting depicting the Virgin and Child on the facade. With its two-story oriel, half-timbered structure, it leaves a lasting impression. We now walk in search of a restaurant to savor a local dish, a delicious flamme it's no wonder that Alsatian towns are on the podium of the most welcoming destinations in France, according to the website Booking.com. Kaisersberg, Egisheim and Rigvier form the top 3. Ribovillet also ranks in the top 10, coming in 6th position. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to like, comment and especially subscribe if you want to explore new sightseeing with us. See you soon! For more discoveries, 